talking year-end advertising and spending and here to participate in our discussion we have MD of HDI Youth Marketeers Jason Levine, Head of the Business Unit at Carrot Agency Liwandele Kokweni and PR and Brand Manager for Prima Toys Kate Scrimby. But before we get into our discussions we took our cameras to a popular shopping mall to find out what consumers themselves had to say. I uh, probably will get a bonus, it'll probably be spent on debt, <laughs> settling debt, yeah. Uh, gifts for my little one. Okay, what do they want? Do they want consoles, phones, what do they want? Pretty much everybody's going to be looking at a PS3, Xbox, some sort of games. Or something. It's going to go on clothes, I think, but not here because I'm from Scotland. No, I told them once I'm a pension, I don't buy presents, I've only got to think of myself. I used to buy for them every year, but I don't anymore. Are we on the corn? I want a DS. I want more games for my DS. Yeah, well, I'll obviously buy my wife and my kids gifts. I'm going to pay my son's school fees. I'm going to be overseas to visit my family. So I guess I'll be spending it there and the bulk of it will probably go on gifts. Maybe jewelry or perfume? Uh, for Christmas he told me a cell phone. Uh, but I forgot what type of a cell phone. But I told him he'll come with me and choose whatever phone he wants. This year I think I'll be buying uh, cheaper gifts for the family and uh, saving some money for next year to go on a well-deserved holiday around about March next year. So there were the days um, a few years ago, I think, that bonuses were, were given, uh, 13th checks, um, and brands were actually competing Luandile uh, for a slice of this pie. Do you think this pie is shrinking with the economic downturn that we're facing now? I think I think definitely the pie is shrinking. I mean, um, we've all gone through a recession. I think last year was probably worse than this year. We've all been told we're recovering this year, but I don't think that will mean we're getting any bonuses. But um, the reality is that as, as brands, we still know that people will spend more when they're happier. And uh, during the festive season, people are happy. During 2010, people were happy. And they tend to spend more when they're in that space. So we will still try and take advantage of them somehow. Mm -hmm. But I think even from a brand perspective, we also have lost the money that we used to have because our budgets Markets have been cut. Are, uh, budgets are slashed. Yeah. I mean, by this time of the year, there used to be a lot of advertising about... Um, Christmas and festivities. Coca-Cola would have been out by now and they still haven't been out. I'm, right. I'm still waiting out for them so that I can follow suit. So you see a decline in advertising <laughs> so spend So there's definitely already? a decline in advertising spend and I think that that period is becoming shorter and shorter and the amount of money spent is becoming less. But it, it is still a period when you're expecting a bit more money spent. Right. Therefore, um, you want to be in there with your brand so that you can get that. Are you saying that consumers will spend even if they don't really have the money so it's more spending on credit during this time? I think there will definitely be spend. Um, I think there, there, there definitely is a change in the way that consumers think. So people will be more careful about how they spend or what they buy or how they buy. So maybe they'll do clothes versus uh, a gadget or As we saw, something. Yes, yeah. yes. So maybe they'll be more reasonable in their spend, but they'll still want to give their loved ones something because it's become, become part of habit and become part of what people do. So I don't think they will deviate from it totally, even though they don't have any money, but maybe it will be a question of how they do it, mm -hmm. and also some use of credit, I'm sure. Do you agree with what Lee Dili is saying? Or do you, or you still, still think that they, the children are putting expectations on, on parents, you know, because they know exactly what they want for Christmas? Y you're right, Jackie, they do know exactly what they want, and they're fairly um, unrelenting in applying the pressure for it. So they don't, especially young kids, aren't very sensitive to words like recession. They know, they, they know Christmas really well. They don't know recession so well. No. Um, so, yes, they do impose a lot of demands. But, I mean, where we have those discussions, we're speaking about particularly suburban kids. Right. Um, right. Rural and peri-urban kids, I think, have a greater sense of reality. And in many rural homes, for instance, I don't think this year will be different to other years, where the, the kind of Christmas gifts that prevail are clothing and even provisions for school next year. Mm. Um, because there's more money in December to buy those things. And there have been years... There have been years where parents haven't bought school provisions and then don't have the money for them in January. So kids don't have high expectations in those communities, except that they have stuff for school next year. Mm. Santon, the expectations are for consoles and games of and course. PS3s. Are you seeing a, a trend, though, from the traditional toys? Maybe I should ask Prima Toys this question. <laughs> are you seeing a trend from uh, traditional toys to more gadgets and PSPs and phones and things? Yeah, I would say age group is getting younger. 
So, you know, the toys are going to the younger kids and the older kids, say from like nine plus, want all the gadgets. So our target group for toys is getting younger. Younger um, and younger. So that is what we're sitting with. And your advertising strategy, has, has that changed then over the years to adapt for that? Not particularly. We focus on TV and print mm -hmm. and, um, and in-store. Right. And um, more recently, we're going to start looking at online because we believe a lot of people are on online. It's going that way. Yeah. So in a few months' time, we're going to be looking at Twitter and Facebook and getting our brands out there so people can see us on those online Elements. And are you finding, well, when, do, when do your advertising campaigns actually start well, for the in, your end period? Oh, we start mid-October right. on print and TV. So yeah. And then we do a smooth run through November and December. But are people actually buying now? Or do you find there's a scurrile towards the end, yeah, you know, we, last we, minute We're basically stuff. finding that the Christmas shopping is getting closer to Christmas. Mm. Um, but even That's though we say nature, that... That's isn't it? Yeah, you know, even though we say that we do generally still advertise because these people are still seeing it. Even though the only shopping at it will be top of mind. Mm. So do you sense. agree with what uh, Kate was saying about the, the trend towards gadgets? Yeah, I mean gadget demand is kicking in earlier and earlier age-wise. So right from tweens, as she says, um, nine-year-old girls definitely don't, or nine, ten, eleven-year-old mm. girls definitely aren't interested in dolls so much well, as What did that girl say? Phone. She wanted a DS. Yeah, yeah. DS. What's a DS? Nintendo, Nintendo DS, there a, we go. a game console for sure. Okay, so then advertising obviously plays, plays a huge part, the power of advertising, Lundile, towards kids. What is your take on that? I mean, yeah, I, I think, you know, there's many things that have been said about um, advertising to kids, and I guess it's one of those things that a lot of people ask how controversial it is or isn't. But um, I think kids always find ways, and kids will get information <laughs> whether yeah. if you advertise to them or not. Um, I know working on CLC, I was quite surprised when we actually looked at who the target market was for BlackBerry, and it was 16-year-olds, not 45-year-olds, not business people, which technically you would think it is, but yeah, it's all the 16-year-olds that are all the Facebook using elements. Blackberries. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm. Um, you, you know, it, it definitely is happening. Kids are starting to demand things earlier, but also I think kids these days have more disposable income from themselves, whether if it's through working or pocket money that they're given by parents. They start having a responsibility at a younger age, whereas, you know, for most of us, our clothes were bought for by our dads, and that was actually quite that a traumatic experience on its <laughs> own, you know, but, you know, we didn't have an option. Kids these days are given an allowance, and they buy their own T-shirts, so they, there's a slight difference in which, in, in the ways in, in which they interact and I think from an advertising point of view we are trying to find more and more ways to target um, children there are more and more actual mediums actually based mm. for children when, when we were younger you could only watch SABC 1, 2, right, 3 right. now there's actually specific kids channels specific kids magazines so yeah. that th there's a channel to speak specifically mm. to those people because there's a demand so you're saying you're taking an integrated strategy rather than just a TV or a radio whatever the case I, may be I think you have to I think you have to, especially with the younger market. The younger market is not as stable as the rest of us. We've all got a program. We know what we're doing at what time, uh, when and how. Um, a younger kid, today he's watching that, tomorrow he's watching something else. So you else. agree with what, what Kate was saying with um, this, the, the online aspect and TV on, and on, print? Online, TV, print. Um, online is growing, mm. I think also because of uh, the fact that you know, it, technology washes on to kids much more quicker than everybody else. Absolutely. They catch on much more quicker. Um, and also there's technology has become simpler because there's now BBM, B Blackberry Messenger, mm -hmm. which they can communicate to each That's other right, with. Yes. And also there's Mixit, which is both of them are fa fairly inexpensive and free. Mm. So they're able to stay online or on digital platforms much more than mm. any, other, any other platforms, which is why it has become more and more important to use it. So Jason, your thought on the power of advertising, because I think if you ask any sort of middle to upper class child what do you want for christmas then exactly mm. in fact i mean it's interesting to, s to speak about the power of advertising at this time of year i think kids teens young adults are very uh sensitized to advertising and communication but for for items like gadgets and christmas gifts i think it's much more about the power of the playground mm -hmm. even if there was little or no advertising yep. about ben 10 to preschoolers it's the word of mouth or yeah. iphone 4 to Good teenagers old. they will hear about it within days of it Absolutely. being launched mm. and then what if we can't afford it jason as as parents what then i mean i think a greater sense of reality south africa where we've probed it was was at in king in kid kiddom was relatively sheltered from the recession so lots of kids didn't feel the pinch of the recession last year into this year um, so they, it hasn't reduced their demands, but in houses where there has been recessionary pressure, young kids don't understand they it. Don't six understand. year olds, six year olds don't understand it, but sixteen year olds have to understand it because they yeah. feel it on a daily basis. So they, they're a bit more accommodating, but small kids don't get it and don't care. <laughs> what are the the biggest sellers? 
in terms of toys? Well, we've got, um, this year for the Hottest Christmas Toys, we've got a few lines. We've got Paper Jams, which is a new musical instrument, just a toy. And then you've got your normal, like Ben 10 and your Transformers. Okay. And, right. you know, for girls, it would be like Bratz and Moxie. Yeah. So it's all your baby born dolls and things like that. But I think for young kids um, getting gifts in the recession, they'll spend slightly less. So instead of buying a high priced item, they'll get a cheaper, smaller toy. Right. And yet they will still get something for Christmas. Yeah. So I don't think they'll be disappointed. Yeah. What are you forecasting regard? in terms of sales for this year? Well, um, even though we don't think it's going to be a super bumper year, um, in the part, like in the past, mm. but we do still feel that parents are going to buy their going kids send. Christmas presents. Yeah, because I mean, it's, it, it's, it's expected, and it's a Christmas time. You know, everyone wants a toy um, or something to open up on Christmas Day, I of suppose. Course. Of so course. Let's go back to the rural areas. Um, Limondila, you were saying earlier that um, there was a case study with Distel, um, mm. you know, in the rural areas in terms of adults and the behaviour around mm. this time. Yeah, I mean, I, I know within, within a lot of um, the South African community, especially the rural communities, there's a lot of uh, migrant labor. So there's a lot of people absent during the year who are then back at home, I guess, at the end of the, at the, end of the year. And they tend to be the, the people that are earning the money in the family. So there's a lot of disposable income because right. of their return. Right. And, and there is a pressure for them to spend more on their adult friend, but also on, on, on the kids and bring back presents from wherever they come from. But there's also a lot of celebration that happens around that time of the year because now everybody's there to celebrate with you versus the rest of the year when you know people are kind of spread no around the country. No one's really there's no one there to, right. yeah, to celebrate right. with you. So there's a lot of celebrations happening. So from a from an alcohol spend point of view, um, from a distillers when, when I used to work in distill and also from an SAB point of view, right. there's a lot of um, kind of specials and, 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 and sales uh, targeted towards those areas at that time of the year to take um, a hold of that kind of uh, disposable income, which is a bit different to what happens in the main town. And